Hey, how you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at Marvel Team Up. This is number 16. This is Spider-Man and Captain Marvel. This was a, a vehicle where Spider-Man would team up with, with various superheroes every month. It was a good way to, uh, to uh, sh you know, garner up popularity for lesser known characters. So here we have uh, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, I always talk about uh, Stan Lee was basically ordered by Mike, uh, Martin Goodwin, his uncle and owner of Marvel, to... to uh, to squat on the name Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was owned by DC Comics at the t time, who bought it from Fawcett Comics. You know, Shazam, that, that Captain Marvel. But they let the trademark or the copyright, I forget which, which legal term, they, they let it lapse, and uh, Marvel snatched it up. And then Stan Lee wanted to make the character as different from, from the uh, Fawcett character as, as humanly possible. So they made a, <coughs> a Kree alien, you know, the Kree are the... Are the the most advanced technology planet in, in, in the Marvel Universe. And, the, and they, they're they warlike, they're always fighting the scroll, and Earth is always drawn in the middle of their combat. So Captain Marvel came to Earth as a spy to to, to see what the uh, the capabilities of Earth were. Should, we, should they ally with them? Should they conquer them? Should they just blow them up? And Captain Marvel, you know, Earth girls are sexy, so he, he kind of turned against the... Uh, the uh, Cree and, and and became a hero. Now at first he just he just had like the advanced abilities of a Cree warrior, like heightened strength and things like that. And then he had like a devices, like a like a rocket rocket backpack and, and, and blaster wrists and things like that. And then he uh, he ended up getting uh, cosmic powers and became Marvel never knew what to do with them. That's always a big sign when when like their costumes change drastically and their power sets change drastically. To me, that's always a sign that that, that the powers that be don't know what to do with them like, like the early issues of the hulk like every the first six issues of the hulk those are almost six different characters it's just six different ways that the hulk manifested himself uh ghost rider was another one that they just didn't know what to do with until until they came up with it and same with captain marvel and the sales were always pretty bad but i love the jim when jim starlin took over and made him like the the cosmic superhero oh, i i love those comics before that before that it was kind of just you know regular superhero and just for the information carol danvers was in like the first appearance i think it was marvel superheroes number 15 so carol danvers was around forever so that's why i don't really have a problem with carol danvers becoming captain marvel or captain marvel excuse me because she you know she put in the time she's been there since 1968 so anyway let's look at this um what I, I just read this today. I just bought this a couple weeks ago. I, I don't know what happened, but a bunch of my Marvel team-up comics are, are just missing. So I wonder if they got mixed in into other boxes and I can't find them. But this one I, I bought because I knew I never had this one. And I'm glad I bought it. And coincidentally, it's Gil Kane's birthday. I think he would be 93. So I figured why not showcase some Gil Kane artwork. So here we go. This is the splash page. Um, I, I, I always try to treat each video as if it's somebody's first time watching me. You know, it, it probably will be sooner or later. So a splash page is the first page. It's not always the first page. A splash page is one panel. It's, 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 it's a comic panel. It's a comic page of only one panel of art. It's usually the first page. You you know, first or second page, and it sets up the story like a movie poster. So we got Len Wein. Len Wein, as we all know already, created Wolverine. He created Swamp Thing and... Uh, uh, I've, there's other creations, but just just a legendary writer. And Gil Kane, a, a phenomenal artist, just a phenomenal artist. I I I, I showcased his uh, power, the Atom, when when the Atom went shrunk down and became like a, a barbarian. I, I called it Sword and Science Adventures because it wasn't really Sword and Sorcery. But uh, Gil Kane is just phenomenal, and uh, he did a lot of the early Captain Marvel comics. And I really don't think. He he particularly liked it. I don't. I think he phoned it in for a lot of those early uh, Captain Marvel comics. But this this is pretty good. Why? Because we got Jim Mooney as an inker. Jim Mooney. Oh my God, I I didn't realize what a fan I was of him because I, like when when I got a, when he was in his heyday it, at, at this time period, which I'll look at the Indicia, nineteen seventy three. He was in his heyday, like like up up. I I think I remember him up until the eighties being being a prolific artist and inker and i especially loved on, on early ghost riders this guy could really really set a mood and i i, I just like the way gil kane's almost like fine art and 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 jim mooney's moody inks just just blends together to, i i don't know this this is like a real unique 
bit of Marvel art as far as I'm concerned. And that's Glynis Wynn. That's, that's Len Wynn's wife. That's the colorist. Artie Semek has been there since the beginning of, like, like I think that he's been there since Timely Comics as the letterer. And Roy Thomas. I always talk about Roy Thomas as the walking encyclopedia of all things comics. And uh, so he, he, he made himself, he made himself, he worked himself up into the editor. So there you go. This this is just like a, a great run of a, of, of a talent. So we got Rick Jones. Okay. Uh, uh, believe it or not, I think I only showcased three comics with Rick Jones in them. Uh, the Avengers number one and the, that Hulk number six, which is my favorite Hulk issue. And uh, so this is the third time. Who is Rick Jones? Rick Jones, I always joke around and say that he is the Forrest Gump of comic books. He He's like the guy behind all the scenes. So Rick Jones caused the Hulk to happen. Rick Jones uh, caused the Avengers to happen. And now he's like molecularly bonded with Captain Marvel. So what are they doing here? They, they, they're goofing on a... On, on a Billy Bats Billy Batson saying Shazam and becoming Captain Marvel. So Rick Jones and 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 Captain Marvel are bonded. And see these these nega bands? When he clanks the nega bands, they the atoms switch places. He's trapped in the negative zone. And then Kablooey, they switch places and he, you know, he doesn't transform into Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel exists someplace else. But uh he transforms into him, you know, it, that's what it looks like. So they goof it on the original uh the original Captain Marvel. You know, and plot device. One one of the things that I always thought was was kind of hokey about these Marvel team ups is uh they kind of had to like just like editorial decree why these two heroes are meeting. Why is Spider Man all of a sudden meeting like this guy? Why is he meeting this guy? Well, because plot demands plot plot power. So now Captain Marvel is displaying a power that he never seemed to have had before or since. <clears throat> Excuse me, I almost just choked to death. <clears throat> he, uh, he's sensing this, 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 the Alpha Stone, and he's and rather and it's such a world threat that Rick Jones is running around through Manhattan to find it, rather than Captain Marvel flying. So there you go. <laughs> he's like, hurry, we must get there. And then this guy with the, this is his first appearance. This is, uh, Basil Elks. You know, look, look at like a great Gil Kane villain over here. He, he kind of looks like one of the, uh, he looks like a Hector Hammond or one of the Guardians of the Universe. Gil Kane was, made a name for himself during uh, early Green Lanterns. So he's, he's a thief and he's breaking in and he's stealing the Alpha Stone. And he's just admiring it, kind of like, my precious. And he didn't realize, because he's a professional, and he knew that he had five minutes before the guard would come and check on him, but the guard got it, because for five minutes, he, he stood there mesmerized by this gem. So he's like, oh, you got to... So he's calling the guy's bluff. You got to shoot me or let me go, you know? You know, don't say that to a guy with a gun. So the guy goes to shoot him. He dodges, but the, as the fates may have it, the stone shatters. Kablue, Kablam, Kabibi, and he turns into this this freak over here. And now he changes his name to Basil X. Basil Elks becomes the Basilisk. And he has these mental ability, uh, um, optic abilities. So his eyes fire all various sorts of like rays. They could turn you to stone. They could solidify other objects. They could like liquefy other objects, be forced, whatever. So he has eye-based powers. He also has super strength, agility. And he even says, I'm smarter than I used to be. So he even has like heightened intelligence. So what does he do? He transforms the molecules on, on this statue and then makes a uniform for himself and puts it on. So, you know, another one-shot power. Yeah, are you too skinny? Look, fellas, uh, do, you, do you, you want a bunch of balls? Yeah, guys, you want balls? Guys, guys, can we get some balls? So here's Peter Parker just moseying on, on down. He's going to walk down to Electric Avenue and then he's going to take it higher. And he passes by the museum. And he's like, "What? Look at look at this renovations going on. And then this freak just comes out. So Pete's like, holy crap, jumps over the fence. We got Gil Kane drawing Spider-Man over there with wonderful Jim Mooney art. Uh, Jim Mooney, uh, he, he drew some, some wonderful Spider-Mans. He drew a lot of the Peter Parker Spider-Mans. And I showcased two of his comics that I absolutely love. The uh, Ghost Rider 34 with that demon child. Oh, my God, that's that's like a terrifying comic. And then he also, I also showcased the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man. I forget the exact number, but with Carrion. Ah, oh, it's so good. Go Go check those out. You know, you don't want to listen to my annoying voice, but you do want to see that Jim Mooney art. So now Basilisk is chasing up boy. He's saying he needs to find the Omega Stone. So he had the Alpha Stone, and now he needs the Omega Stone. And 
shoot too many eyes because spider-man ain't no fool he see he sees he has eye vision powers but he's blessed through the webbing and he's just you know he's super strong he's just overpowered spider-man you know spider-man's like this is his first appearance spider-man doesn't know what to take and i like what he says dr octopus couldn't kill you what does he say here he goes, what, Dr. Octopus can defeat you? The Kingpin, the Vulture, the Great, they all failed. I will succeed, and I will succeed. And then Rick Jones is running down the street, and he sees this. Basilisk is just about to unleash the optic blast and kill Spider-Man. So he bang a Rooney's, and he transforms into Captain Marvel. I love that costume. How many times do I have to say a costume has to be simple and elegant? And that is just, that is just awesome. And one of his powers is he can fly, and... He just tackles up. He's also super strong, like like 50 tons or something like that. I don't know the exact number, but in, but he's much stronger than Spider-Man. It just punches him, you know. But again, like most superheroes, he, he's not blasting him in the face at, at, at 50 tons. He doesn't know if this is a mere human or, you know what I mean, or a freaky guy. So, like, I, I love people who just, like, you know, he could beat him because, you know, superheroes always pull their punches until they know better, you know. And here's Basilisk just, just blasted him. And what does he do? He... he, he makes the ground unsolid and he gets pulled in, you know, even, even with like gravity. So Basilisk has like, I plot powers, you know, that's the only way to describe it. Captain Marvel has, has these cosmic blasts and he's just firing. And he's like, Oh geez, this guy's more powerful than I thought. I got to get out of here. So he does something cool. He, he uses power blasts and launches himself into, into the air. So he's got to have super powerful eyes because to, to, to withstand that, you know what I mean? The, the, uh, the recoil would, would be popping his eyes out of head, but he flies away. And he he's chasing after him, and then he tur just turns the air into like diamond and traps him. So now he's trapped in a thing, and he's fallen. But Spider Man saves him, and he's just like, okay, I got to use all my muscle, all my muscle, and that's what he does. He just super flexes and cracks out of the diamond. And he's like, what's going on? Well, let's not chase the bad guy. I'm gonna tell you a story. So he's like, you know, since time immemorial, the Kree we had the Alpha Stone and the Omega Stone, and they were too powerful, and they were gonna drop them off into your son. To, uh, to dispose of them. But the, the, you know, just like my precious, just like the, you know, the, the Arkin stone and the ring, they, somebody was just like, we can't let these beautiful stones go. And so he's like, oh, powerful. And, he, you know, he grabs them and he activates the power accidentally and the ship blows up and they fall to earth. It's like, they've been on the, they've been on the earth for untold millennia, you know, and now we, we got to destroy them. Even though, you know, Captain Marvel's been on the Earth for this at this point for like five six years. He never he never mentioned this before. He's, oh yeah, by the way, there's two powerful stones on the Earth. I gotta, but that that's the power of plot. So this poor guy's complaining about his wife's coffee, and Basilisk is gonna start using his eye beams to dig underneath the Earth where where the Omega Stone is. And if he gets the Omega Stone and the power of the Alpha Stone, he will destroy the world. Yeah, it's one of those one of those lamos stories you know the, about a subtle as an atom bomb so here they are he, he's web swinging swinging around keeping up with captain Marvel. and then what does he do he's 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 drilling with his eyes and i like this spider-man attaches to the crane so he uses this to like partially melt it so it flops up and then it hardens and snaps back that that wouldn't happen but whatever he's got magic eye beam powers so spider-man gets flung away he's just bashing bash bashing the basilisk you know I, th I think all us guys, when we turned uh, teenagers, we all bash the basilisk once in a while, right? And here we got some coins. I would have loved these coins. So I love this. He, he He's not all power. He's just like, I don't know if I could take like these direct punches from, from Captain Marvel. So he he's just gathered up his energy to blast him. Spider-Man's giving the old one, two, one, two. Pulling steel girders on top of him. He grabs a stone, and now the stone is like, don't destroy me. You know, he's getting tempted by the stone. So he, he drops it. He, he kind of got freaked out. And what does that mean? The stone expands. It starts absorbing Captain Marvel's energy. It expands. It traps him and then disappears. Basil is like, I'm out of here. There's no need no need for me to be here. I only wanted the, uh, the uh, Omega Stone. And if the Omega Stone ain't here, then I don't need to be here. And he's like, what do I do? What do I do? There you go. So chaos at the Earth's core. And then we gain weight. Didn't they just tell me to get skinny? Didn't they say I was too skinny? Now they're telling me to gain weight. Ah, oh, these comic books. A lot of body images, 1973. Body image problems, 1973. So there you go. This is fun. I, I enjoyed this. You know, it, it uh, you know, I, I, I really did enjoy the artwork, even though I kind of didn't talk about, it. but I, I, I'm a, I, I like Gil Kane, but I think, you know, 
I think Bill Kane, uh, Gil Kane, gets gets the accolades he deserves. Bill Mooney to me is the unsung dark horse of this comic. He really, really amped amped it up. I I I, I just really do like Jim Mooney, and I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Um, other than that, Marvel team up. To me, this was a hit or miss series. Sometimes the like 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 a Marvel two and one. As much as I love Marvel two and one, I, I admit that there was like some hit or miss th stories in that in, in that in that series. And this is the same way. But there was some Chris Claremont took over and he started work with John Byrne. That was a phenomenal Marvel team up run. And there you go. That that was the first appearance of Mark Arcade. I think it was the first appearance of Captain Britain in, in the Marvel universe. Just some good, good, good comics. I, I recommend it. if you can get them cheap, get 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 a bunch of Marvel team ups. They're, they're a lot of fun, especially later on. All right. So there you go. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Bye bye.